Hi Maricel. On this video we'll talk about a couple of the points that we made in Tango. And I want to remind you again of where your head is balancing on your spine so that when you're trying to have a nice long neckline and a good position in the man's arm that you're not trying to produce it with the, the head dropping back and the chin going up which will shorten the back of your neck. So right about where my ears are or maybe slightly to the front there and then back through the nose, if I could find where those two points intersect, that's where my head is balancing on my spine. So if I'm aware of that, I can feel that those top joints are much higher than where we normally think of. So it's, it's more in this area. The chin then, like the jaw, is an appendage to the skull. It's not actually part of the head. So that needs to be free and the chin needs to be feeling as though it's down in order for those extenders in the back of your neck to be lengthened. So if you can just nod and put your, your head in a conversational position with the eye level normal. So in tango, like the other dances, we will produce a curve by moving forward at the ankles, bringing the shins forward, letting the thighs come forward, turning our center to the man, and turning the head to the left. So I have a curve all the way from the floor up. The visible curve that we may want to talk about right now would be from right here below your sternum and to the middle of your back because the extender muscles go down here. And so that's crucial in you producing the curve in your upper back. So the curve then is extended out through my neckline with the head turned to the left without dropping the head into the, the neck. So if I'm lifting my chin, I can lift it a, a, just a fraction without creating a lot of tension. But for the most part, the chin is remaining at the normal position, turning to the side, so we're feeling the, that length in the side of the neck, the mastoid muscle, which will always work against the muscle in your back we did talk about that a little bit in the last video, but I'll reiterate that. So it's the same in all the dances. So we did talk about getting a nice position in your promenade in tango. And we also talked about the length. So let's just look at the position in promenade to begin with. If you're in a nice position to start with in the man's arm, upward and leftward into that curve, and you feel the head weight is strongly over your standing foot. Let's say I'm standing on my left foot. When I then go to promenade, I don't want my head to come forward. So there's my closed position, and then there's the promenade position. So I still have a length in the neck, not tipping the chin up. But be very careful here of your back dropping. So when you turn, you have to make sure you're engaging the muscles, again, in the back right here, the right side of your back with the left side of your neck, and feeling that you're keeping the arm nice and full towards the man and not taking the arm and the back down. When that happens, we also usually get a little bit of a drop through the hip. So you want that hip underneath you. You want to make sure that you're not sitting and you feel this pull of your head up into the man's arm. There were a couple places that we talked about the lady having to turn on the ball of her foot that are very specific. The first one was the progressive link. So the progressive link for the gentleman, he's dancing two steps, twice the lady in promenade and then stepping out in promenade. So that's the progressive link. So my part on that is back in CBMP and I need to keep my foot flexible. So in the technique, there's a specific mention of the fact that we are going to turn on the ball of the right foot. Sometimes the heel will kiss the floor, sometimes it will be close to the floor, depending on what the man does. But I must have my foot very flexible to receive weight and not just put the ball of the foot stiff and end up doing something like that. So I'll go back and see BMP, flexible foot, I will turn on the ball of the right foot a quarter of a turn and place my weight then on my left foot. You can see that both feet 
are pointed in the same direction in promenade. So the feet are parallel. We don't want the feet turned out, and we don't want to cheat by doing something like this. You must take both steps into the progressive link. We talked about the turn on the ball of the foot also in the natural twist turn. If I just do the last two steps of the natural twist turn, that's where I'm taking a small step outside partner. The man is in the twist. Now that's heel to ball. And that tells us that we will turn again on the ball of the right foot to land on the left foot now in promenade position. Now depending on how wide the man's twist is or where you land, you may land with your feet almost together or they may be slightly apart. Essentially I've got to dance around the curve of the man, turn on the ball of the foot and find myself back in the correct position on his right side. So I don't have much room here, but essentially on the natural twist turn, if I do it really small, then you're walking forward all the time, changing your edges. So this is technically a side step. Okay, so when we look at the promenade and tango for both partners, technically that is described as a side step and still on the heel. And then you'll take a forward step and now your partner comes starting around you and then on this step, you will have a left shoulder lead. From there, there's not a lot of room. I've got to bring my knees close together, take that small step, and then swivel off of the ball of the right foot. We don't use the word swivel and tango because we don't have swing and rise. So we'll just say that it's a turn on the ball of the foot. And one other specific place where we've got to watch what we're doing with the footwork that's unique here as a lady, close promenade, as you take the third step, you release the heel of the left foot and you place this immediately ball flat and then you'll shape that ankle and then close. So that's a very important action for the lady there. Walk, walk, you release that heel, you place the foot in final position and then close. A lot of times the ladies are trying to dance that like a waltz with a big foot swivel where they're getting a lot of swing and it's a very staccato action. I think those are the main things we talked about in tango is to make sure you keep your back up in promenade, that you keep your head weight over your standing foot and actually feel as though you've got an energy going out from the man's right elbow and up that your, your side steps there are inside edge of ball, the knees are inward. And then those couple of figures that we worked on where there's a rotation from the ball of the foot for the lady. Okay, so we'll work with that now. I think I have another video to do to describe a little bit about the rise and fall waltz. So I'll be getting that one out soon too.